The general idea for most people right now is that he put me in there in a negative light to show how crazy fans are. He looked up a guy who has not made a video on Michael Jackson in four years, and he probably took a little clip of me being over the top like I often do, usually just for the camera, and said, oh, this fan is crazy. I have really fucking had it with you, dude. <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck you to fucking hell. Fuck you, Wade. Fuck, I hate you so much. <laughs> Pause. Okay, here we go. So he knows that you exist. It's, it shouldn't be a shock. That's what he did with me? The clip of me saying fuck you like five times? That is a video I uploaded in 2013. It's called Fuck You Wade Robson. That should be obvious based on the clip he used. Yeah. And, um, see, the thing is, people are going to get the wrong impression. Like, the thing is, I do swear a lot. But that video, I swore more than I ever have in any video before. I forgot what part of Wade I was specifically talking about in it, because I made, like, ten videos on Wade. Um, but I know that in that particular video, I was really pissed off. Oh, no! I think, I might be wrong, so I apologize if I am wrong. I think after after we're done here, I'm going to go to the video myself and just take take a look. But I think it's the video where Wade, uh, Wade's lawyer started blaming Michael's dad, Joseph. I think that's what the video was. And I was really angry. But regardless, I think it is absolutely stupid. If he's trying to portray the way fans behave, it is absolutely dumb to not only take that particular clip, but even that particular video. Like, I have so I have over 80 videos where I talk about Michael's case. And it is absolutely stupid. He's trying to portray me as some lunatic who just, like, swears as opposed to posting facts. And everybody who watches me knows, or at least should know, that I have made repeated videos against Gavin Arvizo, the Chandlers, Wade, James Savechuck. I've made about the AEG trial. I've made, you know, singular videos talking about all the facts within itself, talking about the psychology behind him being a child, doing sleepovers, um, the fact that, you know, s some personality traits of Michael. I have covered so many different aspects of Michael as a person, Michael's cases, Michael's accusations. Uh, contradictions in, in the accusers, the taped phone conversation from Evan Chandler, and the list goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. And that's what he takes. I swear he deliberately went online and said, I want to find a clip of somebody just swearing and saying nothing else, and that's what he took. That is not even that good What's of a What's he trying video. to represent out of you, that all us MJ fans are crazy fanatics that doesn't know left from right or something? I mean, what do you take away from that? Choosing that specific that, clip. That is, that is what Dan Reed is trying to get at. And and that's why I made the video I made today. The video I made today, you know, where I where I call, you know, um debunking Wade Robson again, because I debunked him back in 2013 called Wade Robson Destroyed. And I knew well I didn't know, but I had a hunch that the portrayal of me was gonna be just a swearing thing, fanatical type of thing. So I said, fuck it. I'm gonna make another Wade Robson video, which is basically a rehash or a remake of my old one, and it's going to be filled with nothing but facts. That's also the reason why in the beginning of the video I put, I showed my entire playlist, because I wanted people to know that I never, that I, you know, I, I haven't just made one video or two videos. I have a list over the span of 12 years. They're seeing the list and, as we speak. Yeah, and a lot of the people, a lot of the videos in that list don't even have any swearing at all. A lot of them do, but a lot of them also don't. Some of my best videos are the ones I actually made about Mike Parr. Never even mind specifically Wade, but against Mike Parr, where I would, of course, talk about Wade. What have you thought to this point in terms of believing them, seeing their body language? I mean, what do you take away from this thus far as the documentary's ending and closing? This video has no evidence in it whatsoever. A lot of hearsay. There is, a, there is a lot of emotion from Wade and literally nobody else. Well, no, him and his sister. Um, everybody else seems pretty cold, almost robotic, but Wade and his sister are showing actual emotion. Um, I will say that Wade does seem convincing because of his emotion, but it, convincing does not mean proof. Convincing does not mean evidence. The only physical evidence that's shown is by James, not Wade, when he showed the rings 
and there's no evidence either proving that those rings actually came from Michael. And oddly enough, he actually could prove it. One thing he could have done is actually gotten those rings fingerprint, like finger scanned, to see if they match Michael's fingerprints. I don't even know how you could do that by this point because he's dead. But like something, something like that could be done or could have been done years ago to prove that they were at least given to him from yeah, Michael. They could have done this back when they had their case in a trial. Yeah, uh, yeah, d- d- during the trial. In court. Like, when, 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 James, back, back, you know, when, yeah. when James took the stand as well, he could have showed the rings. There could have been something to check Michael's fingerprints. Because the thing is, the rings were given to James from Michael, supposedly. So they were in Michael's hand at some point. They could have done something like that. Um, even check for DNA on his hands. There could have been a whole number of things. But the point is, there's no actual evidence shown in this documentary. A lot of it is regurgitated claims we've been hearing ever since 1993. And claims um, that you can easily debunk, as you have in your videos, you know, from the last ten plus years. Yeah, there's a lot Michael. of things that there's a lot of things that can be pretty easily debunked. The only thing I can't debunk directly is the emotion that Wade is showing. But like I said, his his emotion also doesn't directly prove anything. Like I said as well, his emotion could just be. A lot of people do do this. What they do is they take a bad situation from their life and plant it on somebody else because of guilt. And what Wade could be doing is thinking of a number of things to give himself that kind of an emotional response, like thinking about his own dad who committed suicide. Surely that's a very big thing. And before his dad committed suicide, he didn't have a very good, a very good relationship with him. Plus all their severe family issues. He could also be angry at his own mother because she doesn't seem like the, like the greatest. She, she doesn't seem like mother of the year either. So there could be a number of things that Wade is convincing himself. I don't think he's a pathological liar because that would insinuate that he's not only lying now but also lying in 05 and that would look, and that would just fuck up the whole thing. But I'm not sure if you can even become pathological, but maybe you can. That I, I never researched. But um, the thing is, there's just no evidence in here is shown. And also, Dan Reed, I want to also point out what Dan Reed had said in one of his interviews, saying that, oh, Michael's not here to defend himself, but I gave Michael a presence in the documentary to kind of give his side by showing Michael speaking as well as Michael's lawyer speaking. However, if you take all that footage and combine it together, it's only about a minute and a half, therefore making Wade's claims about three hours and 59 minutes. And that, to me, is not 50-50. So before we continue, I just wanted to mention, so... You know how you've been hearing the reports of they're not cashing into HBO and they're not making any money out of this documentary? Well, I just yeah. wanted you to read a report. So HBO's Michael Jackson accuser is um, cashing in on this Leaving Neverland documentary by opening up a donation page for people to donate toward. For him or for victims in general? For him. Of course. And the thing is, too, not... And then they I claim... Didn't know that then they told. claim in the article mm-hmm. that they'll probably send this donation to charities and whatnot, but I'll let you read it once we finish this documentary up. But So just one more thing as well. Uh, I didn't know even what you had just told me, but I had thoughts about that regardless. Um, it's actually quite impressive because another thing is Dan Rita had also said, oh, they didn't get any money from this. You know, that's kind of his way of like tearing down the fan excuse that they're all being paid. But the thing is though, he should have been more. Uh, he, he should have been a bit more specific on that. They're not being paid by Dan, but I'm sure Oprah paid them. I'm sure HBO paid them. I'm sure anywhere else that they're, that they're doing interviews has paid them. Just because Dan didn't pay them doesn't mean they're not getting paid. Oh, with our child, uh, you know, in regard to the the threats that come from that Wade receives. I love that. They're trying to show that Michael Jackson fanatics or diehard fans or whatever are hateful and send death threats. So what do they do? They use the only fan out there, not only fan, but like one of the few fans. The one on the prominent. Example, and I've never sent a death threat. I'm the example they use, and I've never sent a death threat to him. And you're the most <laughs> prominent, you know. <laughs> I don't. I can't even. If, if your point is about fanatical fans sending you death threats, then maybe you should have shown a fan who actually made a death threat. Whether if it's through keystrokes or video, I didn't. They were. I didn't know swearing, you know, conjugates to death threats, and all they've done is swear throughout this documentary. Also, 
A judge has dismissed a choreographer's claim that Michael Jackson molested him as a child. Los Angeles Superior Court Judge Mitchell Beckloff dismissed Wade Robeson's claim on Tuesday after determining he waited too long to file it in court. This is where they officially threw in his case. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> They're These putting in my like, creepy laugh. Michael. What the fuck? They know Michael Jackson. What? The amazing musician. And the amazing superstar. This, this, all they did I'm was not taking anything away from crazy. Michael's talent as a superstar. Wow. Unbelievable. But as a man, all I did, can you pause for a second? As actually? a human being? Unbelievable, Matt. All I did in that video was I did a creepy laugh for fun to make my audience laugh. That's the only reason I did that laugh. <laughs> I want people to know that laugh was not real. I did that for fun for the camera. Like, that was not a real laugh. Don't that, they I know, know satire from, you know, it's it's questions I shouldn't even be asking because they damn well know what they, you know, are... They don't know. Doing. They clearly don't know what satire is. That laugh I did was fake! Ugh, continue. Now they're going to say that you're fake and that you defending Michael's fake. They're going to take that sound bite, so <laughs> be careful. See, that's my real laugh. The big, it would have the big no bearing anyway. The big thing for me is that it's not that I don't believe Wade in the documentary. It's that I don't believe Wade because of all the contradictions that fans have found exactly. and I have found. Like the, the the video I made this morning. I think if all the if I think I think if all the contradictions that I've listed in my video were not contradictions, this would be a lot easier to believe. But I'm trying I'm I'm here I am trying to believe a man telling me a story while contradicting his story at least 10 times. Like, it's very like, hard to believe a story that is not straight. Like, how many times throughout this film have you tried to convince yourself to put yourself into his shoes to try and believe him, to try and see what he's saying, but then at the same time hearing all of these contradictions that are easy, you know, easy to point out and refute, it's just that, I'm sorry, no matter how hard I try, I just can't be convinced by you. Yeah, no, I no, I feel the same way. It's just, it's just not enough. It's just there's too much heart pulling, heart strings pulling instead of actual facts. And there are so many facts against him. There are so many facts against him. Never, never mind his contradictions. But just you know, like the thing is, like one contradiction was actually explained. I'll, I'll give him that. The first one I said in my video was, why would Michael want his own victim on the stand? But that was actually covered. Apparently, Michael literally asked him to do it. The thing is, I don't, I don't understand why. Why in the name of fuck would Michael be dumb enough to ask his own victim to take the stand? That just blows my fucking mind. I wonder if that's even true, but again, I don't know. I'll finish on this line. Dan Reed, thank you for the promotion. Well, if everything he said was true, then why did the 2005 trial have to lie many times and falsify evidence? That's the only question I have. Yeah. You know, Sned and Sned and definitely falsified a lot of information, and I just I, I don't get it. There's too you can't, many. You can't, you, you can't you can't ignore those contradictions. I'm just saying. No, you can't. There's too many contradictions, and there's too much lies put into an apparently true story. But. Uh... All right, so that ends it here, folks. You heard it from the man himself, the expert on Michael Jackson, the top fan for over. 11 plus years on this website known as YouTube. Thank you, Jacob.